Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Davila. Welcome back to Save Our System IT. Today I'll continue with part 24 of our BusyBox series. The vconfig program allows you to create and remove VLAN devices on a VLAN-enabled kernel. VLAN devices are virtual Ethernet devices which represent the virtual LANs on a physical LAN. The add option followed by the interface name and the VLAN ID creates a VLAN device on the interface named. The resulting VLAN device will be called according to the naming convention set. REM, uh, followed by the VLAN device, removes the named VLAN device. Set flag, followed by the VLAN device in either 0 or 1. If it's 1, Ethernet header reorders are turned on. Dumping the device will appear as a common Ethernet device without VLANs. And when it's 0, however, Ethernet packets are not reordered. This is the default, which results in VLAN tag packets when dumping the device. Usually the default gives no problems, but some packet filtering programs might have problems with it. The set egress uh, map option followed by the VLAN device, HKB priority and VL, uh, VLAN uh, QoS. This flags that output packets with a particular SKB priority should be tagged with a particular VLAN priority or VLAN QoS. The default VLAN priority is zero. Set ingress map uh, followed by the VLAN device, HKB priority and VLAN QoS. This flags that inbound packets with a particular VLAN priority, VLAN QoS, should be queued with a particular SKB priority. The default is KB priority is zero also. Uh, set name type uh, followed by the VLAN plus VID, VLAN plus VID no pad, dev plus VID, dev plus VID no pad. Sets the way VLAN device names are created. Use vconfig without arguments to see the different formats. VLAN will use Broadcom's uh, NIS interface when the network device supports it. This is necessary since usually the hardware of these devices already removes the VLAN tag from the Ethernet packet. The set flag option on a VLAN devices uh, created on such physical network device will be ignored. Dumping the network device will show only untagged non-VLAN traffic. And dumping the VLAN devices will only show traffic intended uh, for that VLAN without the tags. VI is actually the command which starts the visual mode of X, the landmark editing program developed by Joy. As X gained popularity, Joy uh, noticed that most users were exclusively using its visual mode. So to make things more convenient for his users, he added a link to X which started it in visual mode automatically. Today, VI is the most popular text editor among Linux users. A more feature-rich implementation of VI named Vim, which stands for VI Improved, is also available. VI is an interactive text editor which is display-oriented. Uh, the screen of your terminal acts as a window into the file you're editing. Changes you make to the file are reflected in what you see. Using VI, you can insert text anywhere in the file very easily. Uh, most of the VI commands move the cursor around in the file. You can move the cursor forward and backwards in units of characters, words, sentences, and paragraphs. Some of the operators like D for delete and C for change can be combined with the motion commands to make them operate on entire words, paragraphs, etc. Uh, in a natural way. The most common way to start a VA session is to tell it which file to edit. To edit a file named file name, use the command VI file name. The screen will clear and the text of your file will appear on the screen. If file name doesn't exist yet, VI will start you in a new file. And when you tell it to save your work, it will use the file name that you specified. The editor does not directly modify the file you're editing. Instead, it makes a copy of this file in memory called the buffer. You do not actually affect the contents of the file until you write uh, the changes you've made back into the original file. On most terminals, you can use the arrow keys to move the cursor around. Left and right moves the cursor left or right. Uh, and uh, up and down, move the cursor up and down one line. The other way to move the cursor is with the H, J, K, and L keys. Watch runs uh, a command repeatedly, displaying its output, the first screen full. This allows you to watch the program's output change over time. By default, the program is run every two seconds. You can use the hyphen R or double hyphen interval to specify a different interval. Uh, the hyphen D or double hyphen differences flag will uh, highlight the differences between successive updates. And the double hyphen uh, cumulative option makes highlighting sticky, uh, presenting a running display of all positions that have ever changed. Watch will run until interrupted. Now that the command is given for a ch hyphen c, which means that you may need to use extra coating to get the desired effect. Note that POSIX option processing is used, uh, i.e. option processing stops at the first non-option argument. 
This means that flags after the command don't get interpreted by watch itself. The Linux kernel can reset the system if serious problems are detected. This can be implemented via special watchdog hardware or via slightly less reliable software-only watchdog inside the kernel. Either way, there needs to be a daemon that tells the kernel the system is working fine. If the daemon stops doing that, the system is reset. Watchdog is such a daemon. It opens slash dev slash watchdog and keeps writing to it often enough to keep the kernel from resetting, at least once per minute. Each write delays the reboot time another minute. After a minute of inactivity, the watchdog hardware would, will uh, cause the reset. So basically, it's a deadman switch. In the case of the software watchdog, the ability to reboot will depend on the state of the machine and interrupts. The watchdog daemon can be stopped without causing a reboot if the device slash dev slash watchdog is closed correctly, unless your kernel is compiled with the config watchdog no way out option enabled. After watchdog starts, it puts itself into the background and then tries all checks specified in its configuration file in turn. Between each two tests, it will write to the kernel device to prevent a reset. After finishing all tests, watchdog goes to sleep for some time. The kernel drivers expect a write to the watchdog uh, device every minute, so otherwise the system will be reset. As a default, watchdog will sleep for only 10 seconds, so it triggers the device early enough. Under high system load, watchdog might be swapped out of memory and may fail to make it back in time. Under these circumstances, the Linux kernel will reset the machine. To make sure you don't, uh, you don't get unnecessary reboots, make sure you have the variable realtime set to yes in the configuration file watchdog.conf. This adds real-time support to watchdog. It will lock itself into memory and there should be no problem even under the highest of loads. Also, you can specify a maximum allowed load average. Uh, once this load average is reached, the system is rebooted. You may specify maximum load averages for 1 minute, 5 minutes, or 15 minutes. The default value is to disable this test. Be careful not to set this parameter too low. To set a value less than the predefined minimal value of 2, you have to use the hyphen F option. You can also specify a minimal amount of virtual memory you want to have available as free. As soon as more virtual memory is used, action is taken by Watchdog. Note, however, that Watchdog does not distinguish between different types of memory usage. It just checks for free virtual memory. WC, or word count, prints a count of new lines, words, and bytes for each input file. Word count prints a new line, word, and byte counts for each file, and a total if more than one file is specified. With no file, or when file is a dash, uh, word count operates on the standard input. A word is a non-zero length sequence of characters delimited by white space. Uh, the options may be used to select which counts are printed. Counts are always in the following order. New line, word, character, byte, maximum line length. WGET stands for WebGET. It's a command line utility which downloads files over a network. WGET is a free utility for non-interactive downloads of files from the web. It supports HTTP and uh, HTTPS and FTP protocols, as well as retrieval through HTTP proxies. Uh, WGET is non-interactive, meaning that it can work in the background uh, while the user is not logged on. This allows you to start a retrieval and disconnect from the system, letting WGET finish its work. By contrast, most web browsers require a constant user interaction, which makes transferring a lot of data difficult. WGET can follow links in HTML and XHTML pages and create local versions of remote websites, fully recreating the directory structure of the original site. This is sometimes called recursive downloading. While doing that, WGET respects the robot exclusion standard, the robots.txt. WGET can be instructed to convert the lines in the downloaded HTML files to the local files for offline viewing. WGET uh, has been designed for robustness over slow or unstable network connections, so if a download fails to, to a network problem, it will keep retrieving until the whole file has been retrieved. If the server supports regretting, it will instruct the server to continue the download from where it left off. The simplest way to use WGET is to simply provide it with the location of a file to download over HTTP. The which command is used to locate uh, the executable file associated with the given command. Which returns the path name of the file uh, or links which could be executed in the current environment. Had the file name or file names been given as a command or commands in a strictly POSIX conformance shell. It does this by searching the path in the path environment variable for executable files matching the names of the arguments, which does not follow symbolic links. As a Linux user, sometimes it's required to know some basic information like time of the last system boot, list of users logged in, current loan level, and so on. Though this type of information can be obtained from various files in the Linux system, 
there is a command line utility uh, named who that does exactly the same for you. And that's about it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Any questions you might have are to be left down in the comment section or on our website www.sosit.co. Again, that's www.sosit.co. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.